Hey guys, my name's Carl Golden and welcome to Golden Studios. Today we're looking at the GE300, but not from perspective of a guitar player, from the perspective of a bass player. A few of you asked me whether the GE300 could handle a bass. Today, we're gonna find out. In today's video, I'm gonna be using my Sterling Stingray 5. It's a beautiful bass. You've probably seen me play this in a few videos. Bass lines, guitarists hate and uh, maybe my guitar solos on bass. Make sure you check out if you haven't, I'll put some links up here. In some of my previous videos, such as top 10 bass lines that steal the guitarist's limelight, or top 10 bass lines to get you laid, I use this bad boy to get my bass sound. This is the Moore Preamp Live. So obviously I'm looking at the Moore GE300, so I'd like to think if I can get this beast to sound awesome with bass, surely we can do the same with the GE300. Okay, so the first thing that I want to know before purchasing this pedal as a bass player is can it actually tune my bass? So let's find out. So if you press A and B, tuner comes up. Here we go. Good start. And it picks up the low B. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm in tune and I'm ready to rock. At the moment, I've just got my bass going directly into GE300 with no effects or amps or cab simulations. There's nothing here, just the pure bass signal. And here is how it sounds. <laughs> Cool, just sounds pretty basic, your kind of DI sound. So, the next step would be to naturally add an amp and a cab. The only issue is with the GE300, it is meant for electric guitars. However, don't fret bass players, I've had a great idea. So with this awesome tone capture feature, we could actually capture our favorite amps and then save them into this system. Obviously, this is quite a new pedal board and there's not many uh, forums and things up at the moment, but I encourage you guys to start them because with the new firmware update, you can actually share all your tone captures, all your IRs, um, even your presets. So you could export them and give them to everyone else. So if you have a good bass amp at home and you capture it into the system, you can save it and share it with your friends and whatever. So within the tone capture feature, you go to this bit and learning amp and then see capture. So for sure, you'd be able to get your amp sounds onto the system. It's a similar kind of situation with the cabs. From what I can see, they're all based on electric guitar kind of cabs. However, you can load your own IRs, which I did myself today as well. So I took to google.com and I searched for free bass IRs and I found a site called ccalcabs.wordpress.com and they had loads of free electric guitar cabs and bass cabs. On the website they've had a Hark 410XL cab. I downloaded the IRs for that and as you can see I imported it into the more software. It was super easy and now I've got some bass cab IRs. He had a selection of different microphones. I went for the MD421, which is a Sennheiser. He's captured loads of different variations with the same mic, so you can try them all out. There's loads of unused slots on the cab section. So if we click on the cab option, I can see here 43 acoustic. If I go to 44, here is my IR that I loaded for the Hark 410 XL. So that's using the MD421 microphone. I loaded some with the SM57. 
and uh, yeah, lots of different variations loaded there. Even though there's not really any bass options in the amps, you can use the electric guitar amps and kind of modify them to sound pretty good, which we're going to try out today because I don't actually have a bass amp in Golden Studios, or I would demonstrate how to use the tone capture feature and show that you can get your own amp sound. Hopefully in a few weeks time, there'll be more bassists kind of looking at this and maybe upload their own kind of impulse responses and tone captured things. Next up, we're gonna try and create a good bass sound just using the guitar amps on the system. Obviously they're not really bass amps, but I'm sure we can edit them to sound quite good. Let's have a go. So let's go through the amps. So you could probably get quite a good uh, gain sound from these. Okay, so obviously that's too gainy to be a good bass sound, but let's go through gold. So when it says CL, that means clean. When it says DS, that means distortion. So a lot of these amps have a clean version and distorted one. I keep getting distracted by the really cool distortion sounds. You can tell I'm mainly a guitar player. <laughs> okay, so that's quite a good start. It's quite clean. Let's see what it sounds like without the amp on. Gives it a bit more roundness. Let's have a mess about with the EQ. Let's put the bass right up. Quite like that sound. And remember, we've not even added our cab yet, so maybe we'll go with that and then add a cab in. This is one of the IRs I loaded. Let's see what the SM57 sounds like. Okay, so if you didn't want to use your own IRs, you can actually use theirs. So let's go back and have a look through what they've got. When you use the IRs already loaded on the GE300, you have the option to use two microphones. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's use Cow Cab. So on my first microphone, let's have a look through what they've got. Okay, MD-421, so that would be a Sennheiser MD-421. That's a really good kind of mic for uh, bass amplifiers. The D-112, that's a really good microphone. These are all kind of dynamic microphones, so the D-112 is based on the AKG D-112. Obviously, you've got your SM-57, which is better for kind of uh, picking up those highs and mids. The other ones are better for kind of picking up the low ends. The U87 is a really awesome condenser microphone. Another one quite good to use. Obviously, because it's the condenser microphone, though, it usually picks up loads of other sounds, but this is all digital, so it shouldn't matter too much. 
Maybe we'll go one of the microphones U87, and then we'll have on the other side, so four, let's put on, I don't know, D112. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so it's quite a good bass tone. It's not amazing, but I've only just messed about this for a few minutes. But as you can see, there's definitely a lot of options here for not only guitarists, but bass players as well. You could definitely dial in a tone if you know what you're doing. I kind of don't know what I'm doing, to be honest. I'm making it up. Okay, so we know we can get a good clean sound. Let's have a mess about with some of the effects. Maybe let's add some distortion and see how that sounds. Here we go. Oh my god, there's so many options for overdrive. Okay, so there's 31 different overdrive tones. Let's try out the synth. I'm going to put some reverb on. You can have a lot of fun with the synth. Doesn't matter if you're a guitarist or a bass player. Oh God. So to answer the question, can you use a bass with the GE300? I think you definitely can. It's obviously designed more for the electric guitar player, but you can quite easily tweak all the settings and make your bass sound pretty damn good. Whether or not you want to is up to you. Big thanks to these guys and my patrons who support me for five or seven dollars a month and in return they get backing tracks and tabs from my previous video. There's loads of bass tabs, backing tracks, guitar tabs, you name it, ukulele tabs. There's got to be over a hundred or so on there now and uh, yeah for five dollars a month you're definitely getting a great deal and I truly appreciate all the support. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and a notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my future videos. Leave a like, leave a comment, share this video. It all really helps support my channel and I love you guys for that. That's it for today guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you for another one really soon. <laughs>